Today we're taking a look at Celtus, the card game. So in this game, you got these nine cards up here. They have these little uh, gemstone things on them. And uh, they're all numbered one through nine. So this is like card number seven. And then you have different cards with different colors on them. So you have, you know, this symbol for this pinkish one, this brownish one, I guess, green, blue, and then yellow. So you have those five different colored suits. And then you also have cards like this. You have cards that they have a uh, number one in the middle and then these gray numbers in the stones on the corner. And these are used for two different things. And then you have these cards that are known as like end, end stones or end caps to uh, be placed on a row of cards because you're going to be making rows either in ascending or descending order. So if you've played Lost Cities, it's uh, quite similar to that with a few differences. This huge stack of like a hundred cards or so here. Uh, and then these of course would be all mixed into it as well. And what's going to happen is you're going to deal eight cards per player. If you're playing with two players, you're going to get rid of like 30 of these cards. Um, so one, two, eight, eight. So you have a draw pile of cards here. You would have your hand of cards here. And what you're going to do is you're going to play a card and take a card. Play a card and take a card. And in certain circumstances, you'd play two cards and take two cards. Um, and I'll explain that in a minute. So you look at your hand, and so essentially you're going to want to probably get them in some kind of color order. So this guy's a pretty diverse hand here. Um, and so like, he's got one end cap stone, he's got one of these special uh, cards. Now if this card is played in its own uh, row of cards, it's going to be one point for each of these cards that you play. So if he started a row of cards of just these ones with the ones on it, these numbers won't matter in that case, just the ones. So this would be one point if he has two, two points, three, three points, so on and so forth. Or they could be used in another way. If he starts building a row of cards, let's say he starts building a descending row of cards. So like 10, 8, 4, you know, 3, 1, and what have you. Well, this card has a 10 in the corner, so if he plays this 10 down here, okay, it's a 10. If he plays a 10 on his next turn, he could play this 10 on top of it because they're both 10s. And he won't get this one point, but it will help him make a larger row of cards. And the amount of points you get is based on the length of your row. So if we look at the rules here... All right, so if you have a row of one card, it's going to be minus four points. Of two cards, minus three. Of three cards, minus two. Of four cards, one. Then two. Then three. So it goes on up like that. So this just helps you get a longer row. So right now, if with these cards, a row of four, he would have one point. All right. And then... The other thing you'll see that there is these other numbers in the rule books, zero, one, two, three, four, or more, five or more, and the points associated with them below it. That is for these cards here. If you have at the end of the game zero of those cards, you're gonna lose four points. If you only have one, you're gonna lose one point. If you have two, you just you'll break even. If you have three, you'll get four points, four you'll get six points, and five or more you'll get 10 points. How do you get those cards? You have to have in your hand two of the exact same card and on your turn you would discard both of those cards and um, so if I had two of these fours I would discard the two fours and I would get to take the number four uh, you know a special stone and that means nobody else would be able to get the number four special stone so if I turned in you know two of these four pinkish color cards, somebody else could turn in, you know, two fours that were yellow, all right, and they wouldn't be able to get the stone for it because there's only a limited number. All right, so on this player's turn, let's just say he's going to start off by playing the 10 card 
in front of him. So he played a card. And so his hand is now down to seven cards. So he has to draw a card. You either take from the discard pile or from the face up pile, which there aren't any cards now. So he's just going to take one card to his hand and he's taking this card, which is another 10. And then the next player would look at, you know, look at their hand. They probably divide their cards up by color as well. All right, so he's got a 9 and a 0, complete opposite ends of the spectrum for yellow. He's got a 6 and an 8, which are pretty close together. A 5 standing alone by itself. And he's got a 2, 3, and a 4 in green. So what he could do is he could start building a row going ascending, from going from 2 to, you know, 10. So he's going to play the 2, and he's going to draw a card. And then he draws the 6. And now this person looks at his hand. So he's got a 7 of this color, and that's it for that color. He's got one of these two of these special one-point cards. Does he have any more? Nope, all right. He's got an end cap card. So when you put one of these cards at the end of one of your rows, for example, if you had a, a row of blue, this would go at the end, either after the your highest point card or after your lowest point card. It's And it doesn't have a numerical point on it. It's just it's the last card you can play. And uh, it just helps add to the length of cards in your row. So that's blue. He's got two blue cards. And so two of these. And one of each of these. All right, so something he can do. Maybe he kind of wants to see what people are doing. So he doesn't want to uh, really put down any cards yet. So let's say he's looking at his cards. And I don't know. Let's say he takes this seven and he just throws it out there in the discard pile. And he doesn't see anybody working on those suits, so he's just throwing that out there. He doesn't want to give away information yet. And so he's just going to draw a card from the top of the deck, five. So now he's got two and a five. All right, so it goes back to this player. And they look at their hand. And so they can, let's say he plays this eight on top of his ten over here. And now he can either take this seven... And he's got a 5 and a 10 of that suit, so maybe he wants the 7 to try and build up in that way. Or he can take an unknown card. So let's just say he takes the 7 and puts it in there. So he has 8 cards. Alright, good. And then it goes to this person's turn. So he's got the 2. He's going to go in ascending order by playing the 3. There's nothing to choose here. Takes this card and it's a 5. And look at that. Two 5s of the same color. That means on his next turn he can grab this special five emerald stone. So this player looks at their hand, and maybe they're going to just throw out the six, take a card, and it's the five of this suit. So he's got a two and a five of there, a two and a five of there. So maybe he's going to pursue this route there uh, over anything else. And this player, he's got 10, 8, and then the next one is 4, so he probably doesn't want to start doing that yet. He could start on his special card here, so he's going to play a 10 of that. And again, remember, I didn't play this before, maybe I should have. But he's got this card that he could play in that row. Or again, it could start its own separate row of single point cards. So he played a card. Does he want to take the 6? He doesn't... The only blue card he has is the end cap card, so he's just going to draw blind, and he drew a six green. So it's this person's turn, and he's the one who has the two fives, so he's going to take the two fives, and he's going to discard those, and he's going to take this five and play it down in front of him, and that means at the end of the game... He's uh, The way it stands right now, if it were to end now, since he has one of these cards, he would not have negative four points. All right? He would only have negative one point at this, as it stands right now. Now, since it costs him two cards to do that, he's down to six cards, so he's just going to draw two cards. He could take this 
Look at that. He could take this card, the six, to give him two sixes to grab this the six up there, and then another blind card, the four. All right, so, you know, it's going to go around. So maybe this guy wants to get started on doing something. Uh, who knows, maybe he's just going to start doing a pile of single point one cards. So he played a card, four, five, draws a card. All right, got a blue card. Anyway, that's pretty much how the game goes.